Okay, so continuing on from earlier, we're just going to go through uh, the list I made for you. And first down there is the Fuel Cut Defender, which we're going to look at. Now, the Fuel Cut Defender just basically cuts out the engine management safety cut for when it senses the engine's going lean. I've got mine in here and it's um, located under the dash, which plugs directly into the ECU, and it's a, a greedy. Um, GT power tuning fuel cut defender. Um, it's very simple to fit. There's a couple of wires which just plug into the top of the ECU, which is just up there, and that's it. And that'll bypass the fuel safety cut, so it'll allow you to actually run a uh, higher boost now. And by using either your upgraded e uh, ECU, or in my case, a rising rate fuel pressure regulator, which I'll take you on to the next thing. Um, Okay, there it is. That's the Assad rising rate fuel pressure regulator, and what that does is just maintains a constant level of fuel pressure um, when you're sort of boosting, going up through the rev range. It's a mechanical version um, of you know controlling the fuel basically. The ECU, the piggyback ones you can get are probably best. You can get more power with them, and um, um, you can map the fuel into obviously the rev range, but this is the cheap way to do it um, and that's based on my setup so that's what I'm just showing you today what you need to do is <coughs> I'm on a stock engine obviously you have to get rid of your top mount intercooler and on your fuel rail uh, you'll notice that I've got a blue connector this is the uh, fuel rail adapter it's about 20 quid and it allows you just to hook up directly into this fuel pressure regulator on the side which you can see there there's um, three pipes the top one um, is how it controls the pressure with the boost um, which comes off the inlet manifold um, and that is connected to the top of here. You can also see it's connected to my boost controller, sorry not boost controller, my um, boost gauge in my dash, my Pro Sport one. And the bottom one, you'll have to cut off your standard fuel pressure regulator, uh, it's a little round circle kind of like a uh, silver thing, you just chop it off. The directly on the pipe and stick this straight on and that will go to the bottom of your fuel pressure regulator uh, and that will be the fueling sorted then obviously you need to get down the rolling road to get them to actually uh, set the pressure correctly uh, unfortunately you can't do that yourself because um, you need to get it done reliably uh, next you'll need to do your front mount intercooler now obviously you'll have to ditch the top mount one which will usually be here uh, and you can see this one's a custom made one. It's originally for the CT9 turbo, but I've had to adapt it to make the TDO4 fit to it. So it fits nice uh, as a kit, comes straight off the uh, inlet manifold. It goes down to the front, connects to there uh, with a couple of Michelot clamps, stop it from coming off. Obviously, they've got the intercooler uh, down again. And on mine, I've basically cut the pipe, added some clamps and some uh, silicone hoses from Viper Performance and uh, that's fitting nice then I just actually got, these are actually the old pipes, I'm getting the new ones delivered uh, tomorrow so uh, that would normally go up onto the bottom of the turbo which is there obviously the, uh, <laughs> it's not connected at the minute um, you've got the boost gauge uh, which you need to fit as well uh, I've got Pro Sport uh, series in mine, they're wired up but not hooked up but you can see I've got I put in oil pressure, uh, boost, and uh, oil temperature. Obviously, because it's just a track car, so it's completely gutted inside. Um, so look, uh, because you're putting so much boost to it now, it's probably best to change the uh, rocker top breather as well, because the engine will breathe a lot more with the boost being run through it. So uh, let's change that just so it can uh, breathe easier. Um, it's worth noting as well, probably to upgrade the fuel pump. Um, I've got a Walbro fuel pump in mine, um, which is just a direct replacement. Um, you just literally take that out, swap it out, sort of half hour job, um, and that'll just guarantee that it's, it's a sort of race uh, fuel pump. Um, you'll always have the fuel pressure, and obviously, in a 15 year old car, the fuel pump might uh, die off when it's been on demand at full boost. Uh, and next then you'll, uh, is the exhaust system. I bought a Toyo Sports uh, manifold, uh, which is a direct replacement to fit the TDO4. 
and I literally I made the mistake last week of buying the wrong gaskets or using the gasket that came with it that's the Toyota original gasket and that is the Toyota Sports one and you can see the difference it, does, it doesn't even fit properly and it was blowing terribly so I'm just going to fit that now so that goes um, nicely onto there and then plonk the manifold on top one second But just for to show you what's going on, obviously you swap up the standard manifold and put that on, and then you would put up your TDO4 kit. One sec, I'm not so hard to hold that and try and do it at the same time. Um, and this was will be your TDO4. I won't connect it just yet. But to give you an idea, um, what you've got here, you've got this silver pipe on the side is your decap pipe, which also connects to your exhaust. So that's part of the Tow Sports kit. Uh, you've got on the left, then this is the actual TDO4 turbo. Obviously, the bottom pipe um, will be where your intercooler connects. You can see that there and this is where it sucks the air in. Now, I haven't meshed it yet, but uh, you can stick an air filter on this or mesh it, which I'm going to. You do actually need to stick new lines on with this because it uh, obviously doesn't match anything to the engine. So, uh, there's the braided oil feed, which are fitted. It goes directly onto there. And you're going to need a HKS uh, adjustable actuator as well. I'm going to be setting mine at a bar and that will control your <coughs> wastegate then, depending on what boost you want to set, which is done by the nut. Let me just put this down a sec. mine you'll notice that the water lines I haven't added and uh, purely because it's a track car that I've read that people can you can cook your uh, radiator system because the turbo gets so hot and the radiator on this car is so small and um, the heat generated from the turbo can actually just boil your uh, coolant system um, and last year mine did overheat and spun a bearing so I'm not going to use the uh, cooling lines on this this time and it's just going to be cooled by the oil um, what else have we got here? Um, yeah, it's worth knowing, just make sure you get the right gaskets. The Toyota manifold gasket and the Subaru Impreza uh, TDO4 manifold, sorry, not manifold, the decap pipe and the turbo gaskets. So it's well worth spending the money because, like I said, the other ones are crap. Okay, um, now your radiator is obviously going to be too big because it's not going to fit in. So you'll need to swap it out. Now I've got an old radiator, but it'll be similar to this size. But I'm going to upgrade mine and get the alloy radiator. But that's the type of size we're going to be looking at to put in. Which will fit directly just to the right by here then. Uh, so let's see what else we've got. Um, and that silver gearbox, um, I've fitted in a LSD into mine recently, but also it's worth to change a clutch because I think the, the power we're going to be running now, which is going to be over 200 horsepower, it will probably fry a clutch in no time. So I've put um, an XCD uh, paddle clutch in there. So uh, hopefully that should uh, hold the power. And I think that's it for that for this part. Thanks.